The Pokemon franchise has left an indelible mark on my childhood. Pokemon Diamond was one of the first DS games I've ever owned. It blew my 8 year old mind. I fell in love with the gameplay, side activities, and the fantastic Sinnoh region. Pokemon Platinum took these great qualities and polished them to shining perfection. I'm practically a Gen 4 fanboy. When I heard they were remaking Pokemon Diamond and Pearl for the Nintendo Switch, I was excited. To commemorate the release of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, we're venturing off to Platinum's barely remembered tie-in movie. And let me tell you, it's something else. Pokemon Giratina and the Sky Warrior is a 2009 action-adventure film set during the Diamond and Pearl anime. A rogue scientist named Zero discovers the Distortion World, a parallel universe where legendary Pokemon Giratina lives. Zero assimilates Giratina's energy and claims the turf as his own. Team Ash must defeat Zero before he destroys the fabric of reality. This movie is interesting as it is frustrating. It's beautiful and bombastic, but nothing happens. It's technically the middle chapter of the Sinnoh movie trilogy, but that's not important. I got to know they did my boy Giratina justice. Making film reviews years after the fact is kind of my thing. Let's Thunderbolt straight into this. We begin with Dialga chilling at the swamp, when suddenly a portal sucks it and a shaman into the distortion world. Giratina's like, You little, little bitch. bitch! You would toss it with Polka and kill my hydrangeas! I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. eye. Giratina tramples Diamond Boy. Shaman falls into the crossfire, disrupts the battle, and teleports itself to Team Ash's barbecue. The team asks, Dude, are you okay? Shaman's like, Uh, I kinda trashed Giratina's turf. And it probably wants me dead? Can you take me to the Grace of Dia Garden? That's a good hiding spot. Ash and Don are like, seems legit. And they begin their voyage. Meanwhile, Team Rocket peeks behind a closet. That's it. They just stumble into the plot. I get Team Rocket is a staple in the anime, but they're just kinda here. They want to steal Shaman because... reasons? You can erase them from the film and nothing would be lost. Giratina quickly sucks Team Ash into the distortion world. It's similar to that crazy purple realm from Platinum, but this looks way more impressive. The reverse dimension mirrors the real world, except gravity is highly warped. The heroes meet exposition man Grace Newland. He explains that the Yalga and Palkia's rivalry created toxic smoke, which leaked into Giratina's turf. Shaman's smoke filtering ability can open dimensional holes, apparently, and Giratina wants to use it to escape. Dialga trapped Giratina inside a time prison, so it can't leave. One exposition dump later, Giratina tries to chop our heroes. The group jumps back to the real world, but uh-oh, they're being monitored by Sinister Mastermind Zero. What are they gonna do? I'll just take that shaman off your hands. Ah yes, that's right. I've forgotten to mention that I've finished building your invention for you. Oh no! Who am I kidding? This guy's a dweeb. Zero is entertaining for all the wrong reasons. So years ago, he and Professor Newland were researching the distortion world. Newland built a machine to examine Giratina, but he realized it could kill the creature. Newland destroyed the machine, but Zero's like, This realm is dope and it's gonna be mine. It won't be long before the reverse world is all mine, and then I will rule there like a king! <laughs> Zero is a joke. His motivation is, Screw you, I'm crazy, and I once ruled the distortion world. So, his plan is to use Shaman as bait, strip Giratina of its powers, and conquer the reverse realm. But that's not enough. He knows the realm's toxic pollution originates from Earth. The only way to keep his reverse kingdom pure is to destroy the normal world. Despite the fact that such destruction will destroy reality itself, he's not even a regular Pokemon villain crazy. He's flat out crazy. You remember Cyrus, the main bad guy from the Sinnoh games? I want to reshape the world in my own image, no matter the cost. Cyrus was, you know, a flesh out villain with motivation. Zero has nothing on Cyrus. Zero acts like a complete dummy, wears a stupid outfit, and is barely a threat. He fails so hard at Villainy 101, you can't help but laugh at the guy. Zero sends his magnetic Pokemon after the gang. 
Team Ash escapes by hopping on a train. We learn that shamans can morph between their hedgehog and sky deer forms. When they're exposed to sunlight and grace Adia flowers, they can fly. The team then boards a cruise line, enters the reverse world, and ends up at the Grace Adia Garden. I just condensed the middle chunk of this 90 minute film into a single sentence. Here's my biggest problem with the movie. Nothing freaking happens. The team might visit numerous locales, and don't get me wrong, they're super pretty locales, but the cast itself is so dull. Okay, I did chuckle at Piplup's awkwardness, but that's it. This film feels more like an overextended episode than a traditional movie. There are no character arcs, it's merely an excuse for explosive set pieces. That'd be fine if the main characters were really entertaining. Aside from Zero and Shaman, everyone is cardboard. And don't get me started on Shaman. Shaman got on my nerves. He can speak with humans via telepathy. That way. No, oh. this way. No, this way. Make up your mind. You people need to get on the ball. I mean, I get Shaman is an important piece of the movie, but most of what it says is so useless and annoying, it rarely offers any relevant advice to the plot. It constantly pesters Ash to go this way, or that way, or all the ways, or no way. It's like, dude, just make up your mind. Shaman has an annoyingly high-pitched voice, and it never stays quiet. Anytime Shaman wasn't on screen, I was relieved. Zero captures Shaman and uses its powers to free Giratina from Time Prison. Zero traps Giratina with his airship and begins siphoning the creature's energy. Then, out of nowhere, he parks his hover wing on the ground and jumps back onto his air fortress. Why would you do this, dude? It wasn't enough to just fly to his fortress. <laughs> no, he made the conscious decision to abandon his own hovercraft. Because if he didn't do that, our heroes couldn't reach his vessel. It's a small thing, but this moment makes zero sense. Which fits his character, I guess. To give the filmmakers credit, the fight sequences are extremely well done. I mean, every Pokemon movie has impressive set pieces, but Giratina knocks it out of the park with the sky sequences. They're swift, kinetic, and the fusion between hand-drawn and computer-generated elements is pretty good. The camera loves to glide with the Pokemon, and you really feel like you're flying with them. I just wish these action scenes belonged to a more memorable story. Team Ash wrecks the ship and saves Giratina. Unfortunately, Zero copied most of Giratina's abilities. Zero enters a shuttle, travels to Giratina's home, and begins demolishing its pillars to the real world. The reverse world belongs to me! He causes an avalanche, which will not only crush our heroes, but all the civilians in the valley. Team Ash and the wild Pokemon push back against the avalanche. Ash struggles to defeat Zero, but Giratina whoops his sorry butt. The team prevents Isageddon, and Shaman reunites with his Grace Adia tribe. And what's the ultimate payoff? An awkward insert shot of CGI flowers blooming. Just great. Shaman says goodbye and leaves with its herd. Giratina closes the transdimensional portals and continues its search for Space Boy Dialga. Zero gets arrested, finally, and then we get a montage of Team Ash sending flowers to their relatives. Yeah, what to say about this movie? On one hand, it's perfectly competent. The art design and action scenes are top notch. On the flip side, I barely remember a damn thing about it. My biggest gripe is that nothing of substance happens. No character growth, no interesting story beats, just a whole lot of nothing. Take for example, the distortion world isn't used to its full potential. In Flanum, it was Giratina's purple hellhole. Pixelated graphics aside, it was memorable and is integral to Platinum's story. The cinematic version is more visually impressive, but the filmmakers don't use the setting for any inventive fight scenes. The corkscrew gravity doesn't factor in any of the battles. It was a wasted opportunity. Moreover, this film has almost nothing to do with Platinum's plot. I mean, this is called Giratina and the Sky Warrior, yet Giratina is relegated to a plot device. Its character animation might be fantastic, but they didn't do my boy justice. Instead, we get an annoying Sky Warrior and a nonsensical villain. Shaman is a pestering brat, and I wanted it gone. Zero is such an ineffective bad guy. Look at you all in your pathetic, filthy world! Disappear, all of you! The catalyst of his evil doing was his fallout with Professor Newland. You'd think this backstory would be a major focus. Not at all. It's relegated to a brief flashback. 
His motivations are flimsy at best. I'm okay if a movie doesn't have a good plot or deep character motives. It can be redeemed through other means. The biggest issue holding Sky Warrior back is the dreadful pacing. Since not much happens, it takes forever to get anywhere. Like, no joke, if it weren't for Giratina and Zero's antics, I would have fallen asleep. A good example of a well-paced, dumb fun movie is Army of Darkness. It might have a bare-bones plot, but it makes up for it with a charismatic lead, memorable set pieces, and amazing dialogue. Groovy. Plus, things actually happen. Now that I think about it, Pokemon movies should take a page out of the Evil Dead franchise. Pokemon, Giratina and the Sky Warrior might be technically competent, but it's ultimately forgettable. That's the frustrating part. I really wanted to like this movie, but the plot matters so little, it struggled to keep my attention. Don't get me wrong, the art design is fantastic and the battle scenes are impressive. It was a real treat seeing Dialga and Giratina on the big screen. I mean, it's a real shame that I don't like this movie. The story itself drags on, the characters aren't engaging, and it lacks a strong identity. I'm the biggest Gen 4 fanboy in the world, and even I can't recommend this movie. Well, at least we have the Sinnoh remakes. What do you mean they messed them up? God damn it! Thank you for watching. I want to give a special shout out to fellow Pokemon fan, Valerie Cat. She drew the artwork of Lucas, the male player character from Diamond and Pearl. I commissioned that piece specifically for this video and it looks super cute. If you like what you saw, you can support Valerie Cat's artwork in the description below. Also, I really like Brilliant Diamond. It's a solid remake. Stay safe and I'll catch you next time.